This was a really difficult list to make, just because there's a lot of games coming in 2017 that looked like they're going to be pretty awesome. But keep in mind, this list is not meant to be a comprehensive list, it doesn't contain every game in 2017. These are special games, selected because they're very impressive. And honestly, it's blowing my mind how far gaming has come as someone who's been gaming since the N64 days. But we got a lot to talk about, a lot of games I'm really excited to go over, and <laughs> we better just start now. Detroit Become Human, a video game that started off as an intriguing and fascinating tech demo that felt more like a short film. Back in 2012, Quantic Dream created Kara, a tech demo about an artificial human who discovers it's reaching sentience. You thought? You thought? What did you think? I thought... I was alive. Shit, what is this crap? That's not part of the protocol. The demo was made to showcase incredibly realistic and human facial animations. Maybe a little too human. I won't think anymore! But I've only just been born! You can't kill me yet! Stop, will you please stop! I'm scared! The game is set in a futuristic Detroit where human-like robots are commonplace and are being used for anything from hard labor to domestic tasks to sex. Except for one thing, Summer Ascension. Detroit Become Human is kind of like a big AAA choose-your-own-adventure type of a game. Until Dawn was a fantastic example of this done in an engaging and entertaining way. They hinge on something called the butterfly effect, which is the concept that small causes can have large effects. Basically, any small choice you make in this game could potentially change the rest of the game in its entirety. With what information we have, you actually play with several different characters, and there is no game over. In this game, if you die with one character, it's, it's lost. Obviously, for a game like this, believability and immersion in the world is paramount, which is why the developers have cast over 220 actors from all over the world to fill around 300 characters. and. I've never seen that before, that's, that's amazing. With the size and scope of what they're trying to accomplish, the graphics, the plot, the intrigue, I am really hyped to play this game because it's, it seems unlike anything I've seen before. You lied to me, Connor. You lied to me. My name is Connor. This is our story. Your mother's knife. It belongs to you now. What for? A test. She taught you to hunt, yes? Yes, sir. Then show me what you know. I am hungry. Feed us. New God of War. That's pretty exciting just in and of itself. But whoa, hey, was that Kratos? Kratos is still alive. I thought he died at the end of God of War 3. What, what is this? Is this North mythology? I thought it was Greek mythology. Is this a reboot? What? Yes, that is Kratos. No, he didn't die at the end of 3, and this is not a reboot. I'm glad this isn't a reboot, honestly. Remember when they were remaking Spider-Man every few years? We had to go through that origin story every time? Spider-Man Homecoming is doing it right. They're just jumping right into the meat of it. No origin story. I like that. And here, they decided to use a pre-existing character, Kratos, so we don't have to go through an origin story. We just get straight to the meat of the good stuff. God of War is set between the worlds of Greek mythology and Norse lore. Exactly to what extent this crossover is going to play into the overall story arc of this game, I'm not sure. We do know that it's a sprawling adventure featuring a great journey through the age of the dying Greek gods and the birth of the ravenous Norse giant. If that all seems confusing, God of War was deliberately titled as such. There's no numeral, there's no subtitle, because although it's a continuation of the series, they are reimagining everything. The first seven games were Greek mythology, and now they're moving forward, kind of like a BC to an AD type of a thing. They're starting at zero and moving forward from that. What are you doing? Now his guard is up. 
Only fire! Only fire when I tell you to fire. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Be better. God of War has a central theme of a stranger in a strange land. If you're curious how Kratos is now in the Norse world, the game's director, Barlog, said that the different cultures' belief systems coexisted, but they were separated by geography, suggesting that Kratos traveled from Greece to Norway after the conclusion of God of War 3. He also confirmed that this game predates the Vikings. It is a time in which their gods walked the earth. Aside from the major shift in lore, the developers have also reimagined the gameplay, giving players a fresh perspective, quite literally. Actually, it's now a third-person game instead of a fixed camera game, and he no longer has Blades of Olympus, he now has a magical axe. But perhaps most interestingly, they're delving deep into the emotional journey of Kratos, particularly to explore the compelling drama that unfolds when an immortal demigod makes the decision to change. Kratos had to change his cycle of violence, learn how to control his rage. He's made many bad decisions, which led to the destruction of Olympus. According to the game's director, God of War answers the question, what if Kratos made a good decision? The entire game is going to be single shot, meaning there's going to be no loading screens or fade to black, which is wow. Um, it's also going to be open, but not open world. Big plus in my book. Quick time events are not going to be like they were in the previous games. The enemy count has been increased to 100 enemies on screen at once compared to the previous title, which was 50. And the developers have already played the game from start to finish, so I don't think it'll be delayed into 2018. Spider-Man! Spider-Man PS4. This is, uh, there's not a lot that we know about this game. It should, hopefully, be coming out by the end of 2017, but I don't know if we are that lucky. Anyway, uh, Marvel game. Yes, we are getting our first big-budget AAA Marvel game since 2011. Spider-Man at a time. I hope this one gets the web swinging right. Man, my boy Spidey, all right? He is an awesome superhero. He deserves a good game. The last time we got a tight, swinging Spidey game was Spider-Man 2. It had a weighty feel of inertia, got momentum, and a, a bit of a skill barrier. A nice, realistic feel. It didn't hold your hand. I don't know about you, but I know that Spider-Man has the potential to be one of those must-play, before-you-die games. One of those games where you're actually addicted to the gameplay and you can't put it down and you're thinking about it when you're away from it. I want a game that will kill my social life. Anyway, you got the web swinging wrong, and you've shot yourself in the foot right out of the gate. Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, pretty okay, not bad. I like those games. Ultimate Spider-Man, another good one. But this needs to be golden, boy. Insomniac Games has confirmed that this is not the MCU Spider-Man. It will not be a direct tie-in with Spider-Man Homecoming. But the eyes, though, they seem to have the same shutter effect, the same lens that the suit in Civil War utilizes. So maybe the suit is still a work in progress, and they're borrowing more from the movie than they initially thought that they would. With MCU eye lenses and suit material, and an amazing Spider-Man emblem on the back, kinda Sam Raimi-esque emblem on the front, Mr. Negative grunts inside of the trailer, which previously was only a comic hero, or comic villain, it looks like they're actually making a Spider-Man game for Spider-Man fans. Oh my god, could they? Are they? Whoa! So Insomniacs made some really good games. They made, they made Ratchet and Clank. They made Sunset Overdrive, which had a really fun open world traversal. I liked that. They could do good by Spider-Man. I feel like they're a good choice by Marvel. I am hyped to high hell. I really hope that this game comes out in 2017, but hey, if they need more time, please take it. Even though it'd be smart to release a little close to Spider-Man Homecoming, even though it's unrelated. Ride that hype train, baby. Anyway, graphics look sweet, web swinging looks really good from what we've seen in the trailer. Looks like it's actually sticking to buildings, or at least very close to them and not clouds. Good. Good start. But now I'm going to talk about something very, very exciting, so you might want to find a place to sit if you stand it right now. The new head of Marvel's video game group talked about is AAA plants. He said, things like games you cannot under-resource. You can't not give development time to do justice to the game. We think 
how do we make the game better? How do we help our partners make the game better? This is giving me a lot of faith in Spider-Man PS4, but also, it seems to me like we're approaching a Marvel game renaissance. Games for the sake of being epic, playable parts of the Marvel Universe and not just cheap movie tie-ins. I wouldn't be surprised if Sucker Punch was already working on a superhero game for Marvel. Maybe Daredevil. I don't know. MVGU? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please, sugar at top, daddy. That's how I like it. Spank me. <coughs> Another franchise with a universal acclaim. This is a game people have wanted for a long time. And knowing Rockstar, it should be the game people want as well. I mean, it did win. Most anticipated game after all. Honestly, it's kind of surreal that this has been officially announced. I hope that GTA Online hasn't ruined Rockstar with its seemingly limitless flow of sharp card microtransaction money. Please, Rockstar, please don't give up on incredible single-player experiences for that easy microtransaction shark card cheddar. On second thought, I, I guess they'd be called buffalo cards. Whatever. Speaking as a huge fan of both Spaghetti Westerns and Sergio Leone, which is actually what Red Dead was based off of originally, I would love for this to be their pinnacle, sprawling epic. Their the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Red Dead saga. A true spaghetti western video game, a seemingly unconquerable land, and a plot full of grit, cunning, irony, and pathos. With music from Ennio Morricone. In true Rockstar fashion, we have very few details and probably won't for a while still. But it's certain that the map will be larger than the first's already substantial size, and it's already obvious how deep it is. Open worlds aren't impressive anymore. They often bore me. What's truly impressive is a map that feels like a living, breathing world, as deep as it is wide. If they can actually pull off the feeling of navigating through a forest, and not just a bunch of trees in a field, then it could be incredible. All that we have on Red Dead Redemption 2 so far is just a tiny little teaser trailer, but even that told us a surprising amount. It's a prequel taking place before 1910, features an open world populated with herds of buffalo, trains, cattle herding, hunting, Indians, snowy mountains, varmints eating other varmints. Drop that gorgeous graphics with an astounding level of detail, and it seems like Mexico is not going to be part of the map. This is going to be a different experience that builds on the strength of its predecessors. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to put two games in one rank. Yeah. I got reasons. Just go with it. They're both superhero fighting games. Just go with it. Holy shit, a new Marvel vs. Capcom game and it's got Mega Man X, Iron Man, Darkstalkers, Cap Marvel. Captain America! Wait, 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 where, where, where's Wolverine? No, seriously. We'll probably get Spidey, Ultron, maybe Thanos, but I'm hoping that we get the X-Men and Deadpool. In an interview, they've said that the roster and gameplay aren't nailed down, so any of this could change, and hopefully it's gonna be the biggest roster that we've seen with a high standard of quality. But damn! Two AAA Marvel games announced to release in 2017. Channing Tatum, what do you say? Damn! Infinite is a crossover 2v2 fighting game that pits characters from the Capcom universe against those from the Marvel universe. Maybe in the future they'll switch to 3v3. That would be nice, we'll see. Anyway, Infinity Stones are a gameplay mechanic. As someone who knows more about the MCU than Marvel's expanded universe and all their comics, I'm really excited to see more games focusing on MCU characters in an MCU style. I cannot believe it has taken this long to get some good Marvel games. I am beyond hyped that Marvel has set up a video games division. Now for 2017's second superhero fighting game, which focuses more on expanded universe characters than it does cinematic universe characters. Just to name some newcomers, it's got Grodd, it's got Atrocitus, Deadshot, Blue Beetle, Supergirl. So far, the roster's looking pretty damn good. Whoa, 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 is that, is that Dexter? They have a house cat turned supervillain in this game. 
Super moves and animations look incredible, gameplay looks tight, and with an interesting character roster that's still growing, this is definitely a title fans of DC and fighting games should keep an eye on. And apparently it will feature the biggest DC roster ever offered in a fighting game. Very impressive. Especially because it feels like they really care about the fans. It feels like the people making this game are fans of DC Comics with all the expanded universe characters and all the lore that they're building here. It's also featuring a campaign, of course, Injustice 1 had a great campaign. It was fun, interesting character building, good cinematics, and I'm sure the second will carry on that torch. Also, for those of you wondering about face graphics and stuff like that of these two games, don't worry about it because that's among the last things that are worked on and touched up and finished in fighting games. For instance, look at these two shots of Mortal Kombat X before release and on release. Cuphead! This one might be unexpected to a lot of you, but it shouldn't be unexpected because it is unexpected. It's, it's damn impressive is what it is. It's a 2D side-scroller where you do battle with giant paranormal carrots, boxing frogs, and your cup or a mug, depending if you're playing co-op or not. Now, as much as I love me some so real bloody scream, sometimes I just want an arcade-style game with fun gameplay. And that's what Cuphead is. It's a gorgeous boss rush, bullet hell, side-scrolling platformer. This is what's mind-blowing. Every single frame is hand-drawn, which is an excruciatingly time-consuming process, but it provides a really trippy, authentic aesthetic to the surreal cartoons of the 30s. And sometimes terrifying. <laughs> it can easily take 30 minutes to draw a single frame, by the way. And they go even further with authenticity. Even though the game and objects are running at 60 frames per second to handle movement and collisions, they have overlaid 24 FPS cartoon animations on top of that for complete accuracy to the medium. Pretty impressive stuff. Now, as I mentioned previously, in addition to being a bullet hell platformer, it's also a boss rush game. And the developers plan to surpass the Guinness Book of World Records for number of boss battles in a running gun game by having over 30 to the record's 25. And it also has two-player co-op where one player is Cuphead and a friend is playing as Mugman. Adorable. Or scary. To say I'm a fan of Mass Effect would be a grave understatement. I first played Mass Effect 1 near its release, knowing nothing about it. And from then on, for me, the franchise has always been about exploring the unknown. Choices with game-changing consequences. And this one's a big one. Character development. Five years later, after not knowing if we're gonna get another Mass Effect title, we have Andromeda. Set in a new galaxy, you play as either Scott or Sarah Ryder, a Pathfinder, an operative task with discovering new planets for human colonization. With the Mako returning for ease and efficiency of exploring planets and gameplay focused on exploration, it almost feels like a return to the spirit of Mass Effect 1. Magic. Being in command of a starship and discovering strange new worlds was mind-blowing in 2007. Expanding on that concept of exploration, discovery, and an immersive sci-fi plot that builds and forms around your choices ten years later, rendered in Frostbite 3 is a dream come true. Even though some may remember it differently, Andromeda is the first game in the franchise to be open world. Classes are no longer present. Instead, players have free reign to assign any skills they want and build towards a speciality over the course of the game, with the ability to reassign them at any time without needing a new save. Also, the Nomad is customizable in gameplay, gunplay, biotics, movement, they have all been refined to be a tighter experience. But above all else, I'm looking forward to the wonder of discovery, consequences, hub worlds to explore, and expanded alien romance options. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat again. <laughs> yeah, I said the list was gonna be seven, but technically it's nine? Anyway, Star Wars Battlefront 2017. The reason it's not one of the seven, the only reason is because we have absolutely no images or videos and next to no information whatsoever, let alone confirmed information. Well, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so I'm talking about it anyway. With the six months, let me say that again, six 
months that Disney gave DICE to create Battlefront 2015, I am extremely interested to see what they'll create with a reasonable amount of development time. Battlefront 2015 brought a lot of really interesting gameplay concepts to the table along with an incredible hero roster. Heroes with each individual unique abilities that were not cookie cutters of each other. In addition to doing a stupendous job of capturing Star Wars magic, the look, the feel, the sound, perfect. Personally, I'm not one of the crowd that wants Battlefield Star Wars. And we certainly don't want Battlefield Hardline Star Wars. Go oh God! Now that's not to say there aren't strengths of Battlefield that I would like to see used as inspiration for Battlefront 2017, because that is the case, that's what I want. So yes, some elements of Battlefield, but not too much Battlefield. A little Battlefront 2 in there, but not too much Battlefront 2. I want growth, evolution, innovation on its own terms. I want to be surprised with wonderful innovative things unique to Battlefront 2017 that I'm going to enjoy. That also carries inspiration from the strength of its predecessors and sister franchises of the publisher. For instance, for those who haven't played Battlefront recently, the developers have created some really interesting concepts that I hope to see continued and evolved in its sequel. The lack of classes, for instance, allows the fluidity of creating your own specialized classes instead of rigid restrictions. Weapons with secondary fire, kind of like Doom 2016's guns, allows for some really dynamic gameplay opportunities, and a pistol that transforms into a sniper rifle, that transforms into an assault rifle, that transforms into an ion cannon. It's great! With proper time for development of this installment, I'm excited to see how they're not only going to capture the magic and visuals and feel of Star Wars again, but the desperation of its wars. Oh, and to play scenes like these! Hatsu Miku Project Eva Future Tone. There are so many awesome games coming out this year, it was really, really, really difficult to narrow down this list to seven. LEGO Worlds, Full Throttle Remastered, Crackdown 3. Halo Wars 2, Prey, Resident Evil Biohazard, Ghost Recon Wildlands, and Days Gone. Well, that's probably not gonna come out this year. Anyway, so many games. It's really difficult to narrow it down. Horizons Road Dawn, I'm thinking of them as I'm speaking. Anyway, if you guys like some of these games, if you guys are excited about these games, please leave a comment down below. I wanna know what you are excited about what game you would have liked to see on this list, and what game you're looking forward to in 2018. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2, Spider-Man PS4. Yeah, they might be delayed until 2018. Anyway, haha. Uh -huh. If you guys enjoyed this video, join our YouTube fam. Subscribe, leave a like. We do live streams, we do videos like this. We have fun, I guess. I guess that last one is the most important part, but uh, yeah. Someone get me a DeLorean so I can start enjoying some of these games. <laughs> if you want to kill some time before some of these games come out, I have some cool videos that should have been like on the video screen in the last few seconds. So, uh, check them out, maybe. <laughs>